Live from Rialto, California, Mark and Andre present The Mark and Andre Show. Tonight's topics, Seinfeld, The Cool Kids, Pokemon Go Tragedy, and the Nintendo. And here are your hosts, Mark and Andre. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another great installment of the Mark and Andre Show. I'm your host, Mark Flores, and with me, alongside, is my co-host, Andre Gaynor. Hey, y'all. Andre, how are you doing? I'm great. Doing great? Dandy. Tonight, we actually have a special guest with us. Um, To those who do not know, um, we have uh, with us Isaiah Martinez, a good friend of mine, good friend of Andre's. He's uh, the first guest on the Mark and Andre Show. Isaiah, welcome How's aboard. Going? Thanks, thanks, thanks. Hey, no problem. Pressure. Yeah, so I know. Don't right be now. nervous, I'm man. Nervous right now, man. Don't be nervous, you're man. You're, just, you're just live. It's a lot of sweat. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm nervous. <laughs> tonight's tonight's Mark and Andre and Isaiah show is brought to you by Game Swappers. Game Swappers buy, sell, and trade your retro games and next gen consoles. That the Xbox One and PlayStation Four. You can come into contact with Game Swappers via Instagram at G A M E S W A P P E R S. That's G A M E S W A P P E R S. Game Swappers, buy, sell, and trade. This Saturday, uh, Game Swappers is actually going to be hosting a, a bar arcade event at the Finish Line Sports Bar and Grill located near the Fairplex in Pomona, California. Please contact Game Swappers for further details. We're still also going to have the Retro Respect event. Um, at the same location at the end of the month, like um, I said previously, contact Game Swappers for more in- info as far as uh, table reservations. There's still a few tables available, so be sure to reserve yourself a table if you need to sell anything that you want. At the uh, Retro Respect event, it is buy, sell, and trade, so you can sell, buy, trade with anyone else that is there. It is all open forum there. If you do share any which podcast of the Mark F Podcast channel, which includes Retro Collecting 101, where I give you tips on how to amass a retro collection, or the Paper Review Wrestling Podcast, where I give you news updates on New Japan Pro Wrestling, WWE, and Lucha Underground, or the very hilarious Mark and Andre Podcast Show, one of the current topics, one of the best current event podcasts on Speaker.com. In the universe. In the Yeah, in this known universe and the multiverses and... The multiverse is beyond that. Damn. Tonight's first topic we're going to be talking about, MySpace music. And this is going to go into a little tangent about MySpace in general, but the this came off of the topic of the uh, the music group, the Cool Kids, that actually reuniting after a five-year hiatus. Um, for those who don't know, the Cool Kids were this supernova hip-hop group of, uh, that just came onto the scene and dropped one album and left. Like, abrupted on the scene, though. Like, out of nowhere, these two guys known as the Cool Kids just... I don't know what they did differently. I know they use MySpace music as a platform, but I had never seen any group of people grow that fast. Like, uh, I didn't... I, like, I don't remember their album, per se, but I do remember the beats. They're known for their production, as yeah. well as, you know, their lyrical skills or whatever, but I just remember they had more danceable type of beats. Yeah. And they were like, they made more fun type of music. Like, they really had fun music. But I just remember they blew up on the scene and everyone had their CD. And I didn't know how or why. Yeah. They, they started off on the, on, the, on the scene with, like, a great album off the jump. Right. And then after that, you never heard from them again. And I kept on wondering. I was like, well, what happened to these guys? Like, they just came and went. And, and with music today, that doesn't really happen a lot. Because with social media, you're able to... No, you're able to track your artists through Snapchat, through Instagram. It goes to uh, let's go back to see where uh, where it all started with MySpace and MySpace Music. Mm-hmm. Now, Isaiah and and me actually did uh, our artist profiles on MySpace Music mm-hmm. when we started. You could track how many plays you had, how many download. Well, not in the, you can you can have people download your music, right? Um, MySpace Music was very important. I, when I first started, I thought that it was going to stay there. It was going to be the precedent for the next decade. Well, it's still, I mean, it was the first of its kind, mm-hmm. without a doubt. A lot of, uh, you know, independent artists 
had a platform to put their music on mm-hmm. in comparison to something like LimeWire or, you know, those weird... Because on LimeWire, what they would do is they would say, this is the newest Nelly song, and you download it, it's like, hey, what's up, it's Big yeah. T! Go yeah, check me it's out! It's just a mixtape. Yeah, it's just a fake song. That's like, right. yeah. this Nelly song isn't, you know, 40 minutes long, and then you play it, and it's some dude's some album dude's or mixtape. So MySpace music was like the, the most legit way yeah. to get a person to hear your, your music. Isaiah, what yeah. was your outlook on MySpace music when you started as a, as a hip-hop artist? No I pressure. Think, I think it was cool because you're on MySpace and you're kind of learning a lot. You're like, you're doing HTML, all this stuff. Uh-huh. But then it came to a point when you had like media you wanted to share. Mm-hmm. So you're like looking up different ways. You're like being all creative now, finding like third-party uh third-party sites that could basically give you a media player yes. and where you could upload it. I remember it was like hard you could not do that like you couldn't find something like that yeah and so um and so i remember one time that's how i discovered youtube actually yeah. by looking for some sort of media like thing where i can upload something to yeah and that's how i discovered youtube i was like what the heck youtube yeah and then like you know now now youtube's like a big old it's know, company. It's, 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 <laughs> yeah it's the new thing but um there, we only <clears throat> had so many yeah, avenues yeah. and it was either youtube when it was like in its infancy which yeah. was usually just a bunch of fights yeah um and then we had myspace music which was very uh user friendly yeah. like you're saying like yeah you know if you didn't have any coding skills they made it so simple for you just upload your track name your track add a little picture yeah. and you could share it mm-hmm. which was very rare i mean remember this was when the internet was just kind of getting yeah. its his legs and it's pretty crazy because in comparison to going around school and passing around a, a CD that no one would listen to, right. yeah. your proof or your social proof was how many listens you had on your MySpace music yep. account. Yeah, that so was your claim to people, fame. Yeah, if you Definitely. get a bunch of people there, it just it worked out for you. It kind of drove us, too, to like create our own stuff, like mu- music, basically. Mm-hmm. Right. Because around that time, like you know, it was like hard to record until now you started discovering ways to record. Mm-hmm. Now you can even upload it. Yeah. And now you, everybody can see it. Yes. And then now all of a sudden everybody's talking about it, which was completely... It, it brought... It brought to the light a lot of independent artists. Mm-hmm. You know, independent artists would have would not have had a, a a a great chance to do it with a record company first. Mm-hmm. So they started. You know, you start from the ground up. You start grassroots style. You mm-hmm. start on MySpace. <laughs> you have your little profile page, and then you just have a business card with your MySpace URL. Mm-hmm. It uh, MySpace was definitely <laughs> was definitely a different. So, so, so it's, it's embarrassing now, right? <laughs> yeah, going so back and I, I can't. Yourself. It it shows how much I forgot my MySpace account password. <laughs> you still have your MySpace account? Like you can go to it? No, yes. I I, can, I don't have I my can. username. I can. I, can. I, went to, I tried to go to my music account. I went. I I, I have the same password for forever. So yeah. <laughs> I, I got onto it. And I saw my page. They changed it drastically, but it shows you the old page. It's like, this is what it used to look like, but welcome to the new MySpace. Yeah. This is what it looks like now. Yeah. So my old page is just a picture of me repeated like a hundred times in the background, but the font isn't the right color. So it's like black blinding blending it. it. Yeah. So it's That's just, high. it's a terrible contrast. It was the worst page I've ever seen. Yeah. And then reading it, you know, reading my profile yeah. and all that other stuff. I'm a young kid, man. You're seeing the teenage Andre. And it's just ignorance. The, the, I go back to my um, artist page on on MySpace, and er, there's no music there because I used <laughs> beats that everyone else had copyright titles to. Oh, so yeah. now I'm uh, no, there's, there's so no music freedom. because I mean, I I didn't make money off of the beats. I mean, I just used them, but right. now I have no music because of copyrights. <laughs> they just they, stripped it. They just stripped it. Oh, man. But no, MySpace music was... Uh, it was very important, and I think uh, the cool kids might have found just the best way to utilize it. I mean, yeah, right place, were New right Yorkers, time. Right? Were they New York or Chicago? I'm trying to remember where they I were. I think they were Chicago-based Chicago. kids. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, but... Their word of mouth was really good. It was really good. It Solid. spread. I saw them perform uh, at the uh, Rock the Bells 08. Uh, I think 08 or 09, but they did a great job. They did a really, they did a really great job um, performing live. So it's just you know they they were really infectious in person and and their music and their beats really took them over the top. But oh, I'm glad to, I'm glad to actually see them actually get out of the hurdle of what was MySpace music <laughs> to to now secure the fan base that they previously lost. Right, and it's crazy that they just came back and everybody was like, they changed their name. I think right, uh, they came the cool bit kids came back, but they did change their name. I forgot the name. Um, but this is it. They're just going to continue from this point forward. What it was is that both of them decided to break up because, and then pursue solo ventures. Right. And, uh, and I guess that didn't work yeah, out because we didn't hear anything from either of them. No. Uh, and then they got back together, and 
maybe the nostalgia and the power of their former name will get their audience back. Yeah. <laughs> maybe. Um, but we'll see because rap has changed so much. We don't know if they're going to have to adjust and trap themselves out or, or they're just going to... I don't know what they're going to do. Yeah. I didn't think they were great lyricists. To be no, clear. definitely not. They were... It was more about their uh, their bravado, yeah. more about their, their, uh, style. their ego. and yeah. yeah, exactly, their style. Very infectious. A lot of charisma those guys had, mm. especially in their the music videos, when music videos actually mattered. Mm. Rest in peace music video. Yeah, house. definitely. <laughs> <laughs> My Space, the, the... Man, when that came out... When I, like we're old, we sound old talking about when, a website. When it's that, that old, MySpace is that old. When that came out, I was like, <laughs> so I was so amazed when because MySpace was out. Like you like know, it's a Bible. Right. When when I was uh, when I was younger, I was just always fascinated by technology because I used to get it at a slower rate. I was never, I I didn't get cable uh, a cable modem till very late in the game. And my, MySpace was very hard to come by. Like, I'd log in other people's computers, and I... That's deep. Yeah, it was... <laughs> That's unfortunate. It was bad. You know, it was bad because, I, you know, you, you become a fiend for I, it. I was just uh, thinking about this the other day. It's like, yeah. remember, you, you go on MySpace, you can't go on your phone at that time. Right, no. You need a desktop computer or yeah. some sort of laptop. You or know, if you had... I remember they actually unlocked the, uh, they unlocked the, uh, the sidekick... For it, uh, okay. so you were able to you were able to get it for the uh, uh, the T Mobile Sidekick. Oh, Actually, had the app to where it, you were able to read it. I wasn't. I don't know whether it was in JavaScript, but you were able so to click the links. Old. Yes, exactly. Java. Java. Yeah. Um, if you had that, you were fine. And then AIM. That's hilarious. Foreign internet technology is hilarious. Where, where your MySpace quote was usually your AIM. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it yeah. was. Yeah, that's true. And, but that's that because we didn't song. have. Yeah, 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 we didn't have a lot of social media outlets. Yeah. I mean, and there's there was one. No parents. There were no. <laughs> there were no there parents hugging no, like, us there. Family members in the mix, like everybody yeah. else. It was, it was just you and your friends. Yeah, you was, could write your own opinions without any drama yeah. or filtering yourself. Yeah, because your parents didn't care the, about MySpace. The like one, that. the one thing that really caught wildfire. <laughs> I remember one time where, I want to keep this very anonymous, but remember that one. That one same sex teacher allegation that went down at Carter High School. Oh, oh miss it. <laughs> yeah, what are you talking about? yeah, but yeah, you guys know what I'm talking about. Remember yeah. when? Remember when that actually caught wildfire with us posting bulletins about it? I remember I was walking at school. I was walking around school, and one of the uh, one of the the office aides actually came up to me. He's like, "You're the one that posted that bulletin about so and so." I was like, a lot of questions went through my mind because. I didn't, why would, how would they able to read it? And like, you know, a lot of things came by, but you know, that was kind of, uh, it, there was these little things that kind of went around and it, everything traveled a lot faster. Thanks to MySpace, it especially was, around, uh, especially with school. It was basically a sensitive issue. Right. That Mark and I just kind of went wild with and started making <laughs> throwing allegations. On, yeah. Like throwing out this just in, like we just got like some newest data. <laughs> New exclusive hey, this, scoop. This is the facts right now. We <laughs> saw like, saying. it was to the extent where the, uh, the, the, uh, the person accused of said crime, uh, was, well, actually it was no crime, but it was just more because both of them were of consent. Right. And it was more along the lines of like, she had a barcode on her back. There was these random things like, why does she have a haircut like Drago? And then, and then we would kind of be like, did this happen or didn't it? We don't know, but it's out there. Like you decide. Yeah. Kind of. so you're, you're, you're throwing rumors and mysteries in yeah. the air, and more yes. like just in, just taking it all. And yeah, so causing drama. But this was pre, you know, like Facebook. That's pre, the standard yeah, now. Yeah. yeah. But this was like the beginning of that concept because bu- sharing like possible personal. Because bulletins are pretty cool because you. It was kind of like everyone's status update, right? Yeah. To see, you know, if someone posted a topic, and if that topic, if that topic sold you, you would click it and read it. Mm-hmm. And you guys are, you know, sitting here making false articles. Yeah, just yeah, it could be true, it couldn't have. You know, that's true. I mean, yeah, you know, can't hide I'm not, that, I'm not yeah. saying it's not true. I'm not saying it is, but it could you have decide. Happened. Vote yeah, now, guys. Hashtag know. vote A for <laughs> the. I I really do miss the simplistic ways of how MySpace worked where it was just a basic Sim- basic profile but then um, you were able to tweak it a little bit at the end of it well, like with source codes now. Like, hold on, hold on, hold on. you already went a simple route well like, no it was MySpace simple it was not simple at it all it was it allowed 
the most customization for any social media I've ever seen. It was kind of like a patchy or like no, a like a. Linux. But you were like, still you were still con- <laughs> you were still confined to a format. Yeah, you weren't able you were to change template, like yeah. like you were able to tweak the template, but everyone still had the same template. Yeah, sure. but I mean, you you had like some pages as soon as you got on it, music played, or uh-huh. you know you could have. I guess you could no, you could switch the template around in some spots. I guess but, to his point, probably more like. That it doesn't have all the news. You know, uh, all it was social. very personal. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, you Between you and I, kind of like. Oh, okay, yeah. So, on a, on a technical perspective, yeah, it was there very, was there was yeah. less clutter. Like, yeah. in, in my Facebook profile, there's ads on the corners. Like, right. there's yeah. it's just I don't want to ads in the ads. I don't want to like, say I don't want to. And they're smart too. Like, they know what you're interested in. Yeah, like, it's kind of scary. It's yeah, invasive. Like, like, like when you scroll down, you kind of see articles that deal with your work right so articles that deal with what you write about and it gets really worried like those algorithms are They're really kind of on point hi mark flores we saw you driving your prius and we just wanted to let you know that there's a yeah. prius deal and like, yeah what the heck? okay that's a little too personal that's the future right there. <laughs> it's just gonna get more personal but uh, <laughs> people showing up at your door <laughs> with pamphlets yeah but uh when it came to myspace yeah it was more personal absolutely um i i felt like Facebook, when it initially came out, yeah, it stripped a lot of that away. Yeah. Like you had way less options. Yeah, but you, I guess less was more in that case. You had the only like, the one thing to just write a status, and yeah, then that's it. To describe yourself, you couldn't. Re- you were limited to characters, mm-hmm. and it. You know, it like I, I think the the best phrase for Facebook now is less is more. Right. Because now you have to figure someone out a lot more. Uh, you have to do a lot more investigating versus, you know, reading someone's about me on my, MySpace. Right. Because teen- <laughs> teenagers don't know about privacy now, but, I mean, the the about me's were pretty descriptive. Yeah. I've read some pretty descriptive about me's, yeah. and I'm just all like, all right, I'm done reading this novel. I got my reading points today. Everyone had the, like, so, you know, most of the people had, like, their own novel. Some keep yeah. it simple. Yeah. Or some yeah. do, like, that little, like, questionnaire. Yeah. Have you ever been in a fight? Yes or no? Have you ever been in a crap? fight? Yeah. Like, it's like 50 Red or, or blue. 60. You know what I think is, uh, what I think is smart about Facebook is it doesn't actually let you delete it ever. Like, your profile. Right. right. Even if you delete it, it's still there. Yeah, it's yeah. not going so anywhere. So it's like you didn't delete it, but it's just gone, hidden. I, yeah. I, I was trying to delete my MySpace. Uh, cause my, I'm like MySpace music, I'm not using it. So yeah. I'm just going to get rid of it. So I went to delete and MySpace pops up a window. Like, are you sure you want to do this? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. sure. Please don't leave. <laughs> Please don't leave. I swear. To Here's a coupon. It's like a, it's a coupon. <laughs> we'll give you Here's money. Here's some stock. Like it, it was. So <laughs> Here's some. <laughs> Justin Timberlake. <laughs> Justin Timberlake <laughs> goes right into it. your feed, and he's like, "Man, you can't, lo- can't Please, leave. I, like, really, no. I need a certain amount of users at least per." Please year. don't leave, dude. Please don't leave. I'm I'll, coming to your house right now. Here I come. I'll, I'll give you. I'll give you. I'll give you uh, executive producing rights on my next album. I'll sing. I'll sing your name into one of my songs. Please don't. Do you need a happy birthday? Whose birthday is it? Whose birthday is coming up? I'll sing the my out. <laughs> but he types it out. Just it's all by chat. <laughs> Melodically, happy Dang. birthday to you. Anyway, so I don't know. I I didn't delete it. I actually did feel bad by that third like window because yeah. I'm like, man, they must really need me or something. So I didn't do it. I kept it. Yeah. But um, if you guys haven't, if you guys don't know, uh, MySpace did get bought out by Justin Timberlake. Yeah. For about thirty five million, and. He went like they completely overhauled the site. Yes. Completely. To the point where it's unrecognizable. Like mm-hmm. it even scrolls from left to right, not yeah. up and down. Just to be that different. And it has this type of template to where every page blends into each other. So you don't actually have a beginning or end. Yeah. So it's one big image and yeah. then once you go to the next part of the page, it blends to a completely new image. Very innovative. It was really cool, but it still wasn't enough to keep people. It's almost like it's just the, for the sake of it being old, yeah. people don't want to interact with it. And now you're starting to see it drop out of the social media circuit. It's kind mm. of sad. For it's the, just the old man of the internet. For yeah. those uh, barely tuning into the Mark and Andre podcast, I'm with, uh, with a special, uh, just, special just guest, here. Isaiah Martinez. And we're actually talking about uh, the era of MySpace, <laughs> the mistakes and the successes of MySpace in general. I know, barely tuned in. For those barely coming back. Just running. I need to listen to the Mark and Andre show! Even though, even though it's on demand. Just crawling towards wherever they... The, um, just barely. Just barely you, started listening. What do you think was the ultimate downfall that led up to Facebook taking over MySpace? 
yeah, the, the less is more complex. Mm-hmm. I mean, because if we look at all of the current social media forerunners or whatever, yes, we have okay, MySpace. It had a, to me a huge amount of customization, kind of like too much. Mm-hmm. A lot of people can't handle too many options. Yes. Then Facebook comes and strips almost everything and yep. just gives you very limited access, right? And then they add the status, which was very personal. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And then they uh, Twitter just takes the status mm-hmm. and gives you less words to use yeah. to write your status. Yeah. And that's a whole website now. Yeah. Then somebody goes, I just like the fact that people take pictures. And they strip that and just only give you pictures yes. on Instagram. You can't do anything else. Snapchat. It takes that even further. <laughs> you can only get a even, little bit. A little bit. It's so inconvenient yeah. to use. See me for ten it's seconds. Like cutting <laughs> atoms or something like that. Cutting <laughs> it. If it's small. Oh, let's cut it again. Like, like how much can, less can we work with? You know, with Twitter, are they going to take a hundred characters away? Only one word. It's that's oh it. You can only write one word statuses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Only emojis. Okay. You can only do just emojis. twits. <laughs> To it. it goes back to the beeper. I mean, it ultimately just comes back go to right the, back it all go back. Yeah, <laughs> just start right. back at our origin. It all go back to the two way. <laughs> just right back to that. Just yeah, nine one one. Just have two ways with several people. <laughs> like here, grab this. This is the two way for me and you. Then back this is to, the two way for pigeons, like sending messages to one another. Just scrolls and bottles. We don't know. Where Hiring we're... someone to deliver your Twitter update to <laughs> Twitter. <laughs> people oh, come. Yeah. That's what you have to do with Twitter now. Twitter's going to become a place where you have to turn in your tweets for them to display them on the site. (laughs) I'd like to display a tweet, please. (laughs) One tweet. (laughs) Had to give them a little card or something. Only like the upper echelon of society is able to tweet from their from their devices. Like the the rest of the lower class can't do it. They have to 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 manually like fill out a form. (laughs) He's on fire. <laughs> the, I'd say the ultimate down, downfall of what MySpace did was too much. There was a lot at the end of the at the end of the, the yeah. There was a lot of, there was a lot of artists getting out. Like if you added an artist, they were nothing but spam on your bulletin page. Um, if you added, um, if there, there was a lot of spam with viruses going out with people's profiles, right? Um, and they're kind of going to the uh, to the. To the extent of what Facebook's is suffering from now, with like bot friend requests, and uh, so the I'd say the thing with MySpace is that they just got over oversaturated. Mm-hmm. But now we see what the formula that Facebook has—they're two billion strong. There's it's what is it? Crazy. Eight billion people in the world, and two billion of them have a Facebook profile. Mm-hmm. Wow, well, that's so. what a quarter. Yeah, but this is Mr. Uh, Zuckerberg. Yeah. Mark Zuckerberg, he decided, you know, to continue to innovate with his social media outlet. Yeah. And that's what kept him relevant. Like, you know, okay, some people might have complaints. He listened to those complaints and found a way to adjust his site according to what people wanted. Yeah. I mean, something, I'll, I'll do something simple, like uh, the current uh, like system that we have now. Yes. Where it's like you can do like, love, laugh, mad, or whatever, right? Yeah. A lot of people wanted more options instead of like. And yeah. people were begging for a dislike button. That's what they wanted. People were like, we, I want a dislike button. Yeah. You did? You, you signed the petition for the dislike I button? I didn't sign it, but I know Oh, like you YouTube told me to does. sign it, and you yeah. said put your name in it. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> <It's stupid>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all the one dishing it out. What are you doing? Yeah. Huh? Kind of put my mind like, oh, no. You were the one dishing out the petition over at the Albertsons. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Instead of giving a dislike button, he gave you, like, six options. Yeah. And people use them now. And people are actually creative with them, too. It's like... Uh, like for like they'll have a picture of three or four people and they'll go like for this person love for this person dislike or oh know. yeah they, I've seen a bunch of sports pages like right. that where like who's the best player to like for this yeah. mad for this and, and, yeah. and it's cool because you you just get a lot of you get different perspective on things mm-hmm. um, I still think the like system is flawed at times because someone could write something tragic and they'll still click like I yeah. don't understand that but. Uh, I don't know. When it comes to Mark Zuckerberg and his site, he is continuing to innovate. Yeah. That's why so many sites use Facebook. Yeah. It's to the point now, uh, you know, based on some marketing practices I've been studying, Facebook is not a social me- network anymore. It is officially the internet. Because yeah. whoever has a Facebook account will go on it more than once a day, no matter what. Yeah. You, ha- you, have to, you have to go. Yeah. Because it's the only way to figure out what your friends are doing. Yep. People people don't even go to restaurants. Like they're sitting on Facebook right yeah, now. Yeah, they'll they'll wait for someone to recommend a restaurant now. <laughs> yes. You know. So it's pretty wild. And the, and and the newest innovation that Mark is working on, mm-hmm. not you, sir. Yeah, I know. The the good the 
Powerful uh, you know, I, ever since I botched uh, with the laser disc idea, it didn't. Yeah. Nothing pans out anymore for me. He's working on VR for Facebook. Oh man! And and it looks pretty crazy. So I mean, he's going to continue to innovate. That's yeah. why my like MySpace died when Tom sold the site. Yeah. Yeah, and he he kind of plateaued at the Tom point. Tom over his shoulder. Yeah. Do we know what Tom does now? Does he doing anything that you? Uh, he's still at the he's bar. Probably vac- like, oh, at a, why? He's probably at a vacation somewhere in the Bahamas still. He's like crying. Five like, years later, he's still on a vacation. He doesn't even know that like his site is. He's is like gone. what? <laughs> he doesn't even have a phone. He's all bragging. He's like, I'm the creator of MySpace. Dang. Still like <laughs> kicking back. Yeah. Hey. In the Caribbean. Hey, does yeah. this? He does the default photo pose for him. <laughs> does this face ring a bell? And then he does the photo pose. <laughs> <laughs> and he can only attract like 25 to 30 old women like oh my god you're Tom I remember you when I was 13 me Tom oh my god that's that was, right that ladies that brings up something about MySpace that I remember when you first get it you get him as a you friend get him you as get a friend, friend. Like, who the, I was I'll like who the hell is Tom like, you can I'll be all alone all sad like I have no friends you add MySpace hey I got a friend <laughs> yeah it's Tom 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 from MySpace that cocky though like <laughs> No matter what, whoever joins my site, I'm their friend. I'm just, I'm just fascinated with Mark Zuckerberg though, because this guy, not only is he an innovator, but this guy's smart. Yeah, he's so got a combination of like intelligence, like super intelligence, mm-hmm. but you're an innovator and a dreamer, and you have a billions, billions of dollars, and and you're the most boring and modest yeah. person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're uh, Bruce Wayne. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. You're <laughs> Lex Luthor. <laughs> The the next <laughs> he fights crime <laughs> she fights crime at night <laughs> Mark Zuckerberg she marks Zuckerberg at night yo that would be actually kind of ideal right like he, he would be the perfect all person skinny. to be Batman <laughs> someone feed this guy a sandwich he's trying to beat me up I'm trying to mug this lady and he's bugging me <laughs> this guy keeps nudging me with a stick the VR man VR man yeah. stupid it's all obvious to him. His his Zuckerman. The way he like, does it, obvious. the way he does it, he has to put the goggles on you for you to be transported to his world. <laughs> Welcome to my world now. I'm VR man. <laughs> like the only way to beat him is to take off the goggles. <laughs> but you, you're so afraid you can't do it. You're, oh you're so wow! Disoriented. It's the so the the next topic I wanted to get to on the Mark and Andre show was uh, the nostalgic show recap of the week. And uh, me, Andre, and Isaiah actually were watching a couple of episodes of the show rather recently. And uh, we have our few opinions on it. Um, the show is Seinfeld. The show, to me, I, I enjoy see- watching the show. I think, it's, I think it's very funny. I think it's witty. Uh, but what made the show such a hit, you know? Looking back at you know shows of the past, it's it's like this: if you didn't like Seinfeld, you more than likely like Friends, and then vice versa, mm-hmm. you know. But what what made Seinfeld like unique is that these everyday situations that they were placed in mimicked modern day, but it was still at an escalated pace for sitcom shows. Mm-hmm. What 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 do you guys think made the show such a hit in your opinion? I think he's a racist, first of all. <laughs> what the? <laughs> told me he's just four up. segments ahead. <laughs> all the heat in the heat of the moment. F- Already mad. Like F him. <laughs> all of them. He's a bigot. He's no, He's you know, a bigot. And, and, all, and all you go ahead. I you think you have to start with the bass. I mean, just the little stupid bass line. <laughs> yeah, like, the like, bass line kind of like <laughs> a new rip every joke. I mean, even that <laughs> kind of like you know segue. <laughs> yeah, because it always the, the show always ended with something dumb being said, and then a freeze frame, and then it was like yeah. yeah, and then after that, I just tied my shoes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you had to have watched the whole show to get that last I line. Mean, I don't even know who thought of that. Like who thought like oh let's just, just put the bass line in. but it's like, not even like a like a convenient sounding no, bass it's it, like it, obnoxious it's very yeah. obnoxiously sounding it's like an 80s bass it's all too yeah. weird I, I hate the tuning yeah. on the bass and then and then not only do you get <laughs> that <laughs> the beginning of uh the beginning of the show starts with that bass line and then it gets so hit me with the bass line real quick <laughs> who are all these people on the bus and why do they have exact change I mean, what's going on with new york just the like, sound of that to me it's like <laughs> Just his his voice with the combination of that bass. Yeah, <laughs> like in his the way he delivers his comedy, it's like you have to. Uh, he there is no delivery. It's just a structure of 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 a, a structure of a couple points to bring the punchline. Okay, well, I will be the bad guy. Yeah, what made the show in your eyes such a hit, though? Well, I, well I'm coming from a perspective yeah. where I am very deep in the comedy game. 
I'm very deep in the alternative comedy scene because yeah. standard comedy is just so cut and paste. I can see a joke by the end. Like, as soon as they start it, I already know the punchline and I'm just waiting. Yeah. So, in... <laughs> Why are you close with Well, because I'm saying you're kind of cursed in a way because you know, you're so deep into comedy. It's, it's like... You kind of you'll know so all much the... more. Right. So, but in this case, you know, uh, to be fair, uh, this, for its period of time, was ahead of its time. It yeah. actually set the standard for following com- comedies. I mean... Louis is one of my favorite comedy shows, and it's completely based on Seinfeld. Yeah. yeah. It's completely set in the exact same format. Start with a comedy bit, do a very realistic perspective on that, and then end with another uh, another comedy bit. Yeah. For its period of time, Seinfeld touched on a lot of subject matter that was taboo, and he did it clean. Yeah. That is not easy to do, especially for its time period. It's like, they did a whole episode on masturbation. Oh, yeah. And they never said it once. Yeah. They never even used that word. They never even alluded to it with, with hand gestures or anything disgusting. Yeah. They just, it was all verbal. It kept it very general. Very general, but general, yet, you know, uh, as direct as possible. Yeah, because then you build the innuendos in your mind. Exactly. And that's you being the, kind of like the author of the show. to yes. your Because it's built to your perspective now. Yes. And when it comes to uh, just the sitcom format, yeah. it can be cheesy. It can be overwhelmingly cheesy. Yeah. And there are elements... There are some episodes where I watch Seinfeld and I'm like, it's still cheesy. But then there's other episodes where I'm like, that is so clever. Like, the way this whole... Like, some whole episodes, I'm like, that's great. This is yeah. perfect. There was, uh, there was one episode... I don't remember I didn't show you guys this one, but... Uh, George Costanza's parents buy a marble ride to impress George's, uh, George's then-girlfriend. Mm-hmm. But uh, the dad got upset when they forgot to bring the rye, the marble rye out. He stole it back. He took it back. <laughs> and now George was stuck in a situation where they had to go back to the house and they wanted to eat the marble rye for coffee the next day. So he had to come up with a big scheme to bring back the marble rye from outside of the house, inside the house, onto the place where they have left it. Okay, so uh, what do you like in particular about the show? Because th- you, you like are ecstatic you're like Whoa! yeah every, every episode you are just loving it so what is it about the show that that you know the, brings that excitement the out dialogue the oh. dialogue to me with it's just being so witty like with dumb like with dumb things being answered like, you put peanut butter on bananas Margot, or like it's like yeah. like uh, of course jerry i mean why wouldn't i why wouldn't i put, clip my toenails and collect them <laughs> or like just dumb crap like that and it's just funny to me because it's just it's so out there, yeah. but it still plays onto the show that it actually everything, and w- especially so the dialogue, and then I enjoy the fact that everything comes back full circle. Okay, yeah. like the there's this one episode where Kramer had a a, 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 a license plate that said "Ass Man," mm-hmm. and the <laughs> throughout the show, everyone's throwing him compliments with every girl he has in the car. Hey, what's up, Ass Man? And like you know, he's getting all this like dad, like he's getting real confidence. And then, so at the end of the sh- end of the episode, the proctologist, his his uh, basically his butt doctor, mm-hmm. b- is the ass man, and he's the one that had the license plate. And he's like, "You're the ass man. You bet your ass." <laughs> <laughs> and then they and then boom, boom, they close on that. Well, Dude, it, I like it because it comes back full circle in the dialogue. I, I, that's I like what I think too. the strengths are to, to Seinfeld. Yeah. Isaiah, what, what do you think? I, I like it too. I, that's I, it. I, what do you, what do you think? It. What do you like what about? What I like about it is like you never know really what you're gonna get in these episodes. Yeah. Like, and there's there's a, so much little like detail, like jokes, little like little small jokes that yeah. kind of just ultimately build up until you start to really realize these characters and who they are. Yeah. And mm-hmm. then they just the way how like. It's kind of like they're just being real with each other and telling you what they really feel with sometimes. Yeah. We have those kind of real, like, shallow kind of things, too. Yeah. And so I just like how they bring out those little things and they just, like you said, come full circle. The way Jerry dresses is funny. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Tucked in shirt, you know, with those jeans. Yeah, with, with, dress, with the dress shirt, oh, jeans, dress. and some... The dress shirt, <laughs> jeans, and some, uh, <laughs> some tennis shoes. So... <laughs> okay, in regards to the writing... Yeah. I, I have... That's my favorite part of the show. The writing. Yeah. The writing is phenomenal. Mm-hmm. That that is what made it ahead of its time. Yeah. But Jerry can't act, and that's what it's a joke in itself as well. Like Jerry yeah. knows he can't act, and he gives himself plenty of dialogue, and it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter because the writing it holds up for on its own. Yeah, because then he deli- all you all he has to do in that sense is deliver it like a comedy punchline mm-hmm. or like a comedy bit. Mm-hmm. At, and, and at that point, that is Jerry Seinfeld at his purest because he's not necessarily acting. Mm. 
You know, that's good because then you get the best Jerry Seinfeld you can get, which is the comedic one, which right. is why they're still having him at Caesar's Palace right. selling out. You know, it's just this guy is is crazy amounts of good. What do you guys say the weakness of the show is? Oh. I think Andre has his. No, no, go ahead. I, 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 I think you got yours. I think I <laughs> all know that yours. pressure. Um, it's just dated. That's all it is, in, in my opinion. It's dated. Mm-hmm. But that's, you know, it's like listening to, uh, and uh, I'll use hip-hop as an example, you know, listening to Run DMC and then, you know, listening to Eminem. You know, you yeah. see the influence Apples of where it came. and oranges, right. yeah. But I'm just saying, like, when you see just the growth of exactly. where something started and then you see where it ended up. Mm-hmm. Uh, comedy today has taken his formula and just, like, <laughs> upgraded to a completely different level. Yeah. Where it's like, we, you know how Jerry and everybody has an arching story and it always it always ends up coming back together. Yeah. New shows have, like, eight arches with all kinds of different characters yeah. and they do jokes within their arches and yeah. cross the arches and then <laughs> break the arches and start new arches. Like, right. All these weird, complex types of writing, but they always cite Seinfeld. Like, oh, I got my inspiration for writing my show from Seinfeld. Seinfeld is such an innovator, but now it's dated to me. Yeah. yeah. And and when it comes to like their their format and how they style their punches, it's like, oh, okay, I know where they're going. Yeah. 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 That's true. But it's great when they get there because it's like their execution is great. Yeah. Um, and Jerry's clothes. I was going to say, their weakness to me would be their finale. I wasn't really a big fan of the finale. Mm-hmm. I think it came too full circle because it kind of like kind of tied everything like in the whole series together. Yeah. Because they had like a trial. and mm-hmm. they, So they brought all the, the guest appearances all basically wow. in the last episode. So it yeah. kind of like really full circle. Like every character. And every, that they... Almost like every character pretty much. Like every, every main character. One. Yeah, mm-hmm. that stood out. So <clears throat> that, I didn't really like the finale. I think they yeah. could have did a better job and I think that was probably... Yeah, were they... Were, I remember George pitched the idea about Seinfeld like to, to producers like it's a show about nothing. And they're basically breaking the fourth wall to their own show. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. And with... After they do that I mean you have to see that they have nothing else i guess yeah, the show ran for not what eight or what was it, eight seasons yeah that's, so that that's, is that that's is very run. they promoted very that finale hard i remember they were promoting that finale compared to, at the same time they were launching uh, jerry springer's finale or something crazy with jerry springer so it was like something. jerry and jerry, jerry or yeah something. it was like some <clears> sort of tie like which one are you gonna watch jerry springer or jerry, jerry seinfeld? seinfeld you know like Mm. I don't know. It's just a funny time. I remember that. <laughs> just that particular I'm, moment. Yeah, because because the finale played a lot into uh, kind of the same uh, kind of to the same point of where uh, of where uh, who shot Mr. Burns. Mm-hmm. I remember when the the whole Simpsons who shot Mr. Burns thing. I remember that took a lot of. It was the Seven Eleven. You right. had to pick oh if you God. picked the right character yeah. who did it. You would actually win a prize, mm-hmm. and so it was Maggie. more likely Maggie. Maggie, but. So dumb. Yeah, um, we should have somebody else. For real. Yeah. Going, going back to what Seinfeld did, I think the weakness to Seinfeld is, I kind of agree with Andre, is that some of the episodes you'll watch today don't really pan out. Not a lot of people will know what a TV guide is. And uh, especially uh, millenn- like millennials. and mm-hmm. I mean, I remember I still had to look through a TV guide if I didn't have the preview channel. Right, the preview right. channel wasn't working, but I mm-hmm. mean... This uh, some of the some of the episodes like would have been easily solved with like a Google, with a <laughs> or with, a, a call, yeah, cell phone call, yeah, an actual cell phone call instead of a payphone. But I mean, at that point, with with when you go to that, you're going to nitpick. But I mean, the shows for its time, for yeah. its time, top of the line. Yeah. It is a bit dated. That's all, though. Like, also, I mean, we're at a point now. People's attention spans are just totally different. Yeah, Seinfeld is very naturally paced i can definitely say that it's yeah. a naturally paced thing it's like everything's happening smoothly a joke is op- like it's introduced yeah then we smoothly get to a punch and or we smoothly get to you know a swerve of the punch and then hit you with another side punch yeah. or something yeah. like that you, you but all- now it's be looking like arrested development or something yeah you get a punch every yeah. 30 seconds yeah. like okay i can't breathe now yeah. because with, i can't stop i gotta laugh with seinfeld you have to be fully <laughs> invested into the show because the punchline you get in the beginning will pay off at the end yes yes the well, so after watching the certain batch of episodes, I mean, we went through a good about eight or nine episodes the other day. Um, what what would you say is your favorite episodes? The soup Nazi. <laughs> the soup, soup Nazi. Nazi. Soup Nazi was ridiculous. I, I thought that was hilarious. Yeah. I actually, or the the episode when they uh, take that flight. Oh yeah, where they take the first class and coach flight. Yeah, like just you know sharing the dichotomy of first class to coach. Yeah, and it's so drastically different. It's like retarded different. Like they're serving. 
freshly baked cookies. Yeah. And, and they're getting Sundays, Sundays yeah. and all this crap. And they, like, they're getting tucked in <laughs> to go to sleep. <laughs> Some blankets. What's all that noise and back then, there? Like, someone tried to sneak into the first class. Oh. oh. The, the nerve of some people. <laughs> I, I enjoy the, um, I enjoy the Van Buren Boys episode. And, uh, the Marble Rye episode to me is pretty, pretty hilarious because it's, uh, it just goes to, just, Jerry has to steal the last Marble Rye from an old lady mm-hmm. to make it happen. And George has to make sure that this works in the, the, the spoilers ahead, but George gets the marble rye after he fishes it up with a fishing reel, r- turns around, and then everyone's looking at him, the parents and then the girlfriend, with the marble rye in his hand. So he gets caught red-handed with the marble rye in his hand. What was your uh, favorite episode, Isaiah? You know, it's hard to choose one. I can't, like, the thing about Seinfeld is I, I like the show a lot, but yeah. I can't really pinpoint one until I like, watch more. I have to watch a couple and kind of pick one. Mm-hmm. So, but, but the one that, that stands out still out of all of them, I think is the best episode is the Soup Nazi one. Mm-hmm. And I think because it just kind of captures the essence of, of that show. And plus you got that incredible, uh, uh, the, the, I, I forget his name, but he plays a Soup Nazi. Yeah. He did a great job. And they, they, I like the way they over exaggerated them a bit. Yes. And made them like super, like almost cartoonish. For, forgive like, the pun, but super, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I enjoyed the <laughs> fact that during that episode, and I couldn't stop laughing, but Kramer was the only one to have an actual conversation. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember that. I was like, what? Hey, tell you what, you can have my armoire. Yeah. It's fine. Take it. You're a friend to me. She's yeah, like, oh, like, what that, the that heck? Connection just like, yeah. I'm kicking yeah. it, though. I enjoy all breaking the rules. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> eating his soup right in front of him, chilling. <laughs> one of the funniest quirks is that Kramer knew everything. Kramer can can gel in with anybody. He's homies with everyone. Yeah, at all <laughs> at all times. Jerry, don't worry. I know a guy. Damn, how many times does this guy know a guy? And, how often are you out? Kramer? And this guy never worked. Right. J- like Kramer never worked. I remember he was on strike from a bagel store for a long time. He's like, we're on strike. The strike's over. I could go back to work. <laughs> I remember one of the punchlines was that like. He actually, the, the strike ended, and he was able to go back to work. And then the final reveal was like, well, where do you work at? And I could work at a bagel company or something like that. It was just weird. And then you finally realize what his name was, Cosmo. Cosmo. Because no one knew what his name was. It was just Kramer. That was his last name. Cosmo. He was just, he was just always available. He was, just, you know, always down. Just yeah. Bursting in at random hours, the, the, hours of the day. Oh, man. Never man. knocking, just... <clears throat> always into something. Uh, something <laughs> outlandish. Yeah. Something that's, like, out there. Always got the hookup. Always, like, he has those moves, too. Like, he has the moves on the ladies all of a sudden. Yeah. It makes no sense. Or, where uh, George converts to... I forget what it, the... The he converts to uh, uh dang and I forgot I, yeah the uh, but he converts to like this <laughs> mysterious this, 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 <laughs> he converts to this very abstract religion and and Kramer barely meets the sister of the religion and she's just all intrigued by him he's like father I have to rem- renounce my faith I've met someone and, and he's just Kramer's like I just did nothing but say hi to her. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, and then he goes back to the uh, the priest of the the the. The priest gets the, it. He's like, you have the lure. <laughs> no, you have the lure. <laughs> the lure. He's like, Father, what do I do to get special, rid of it? Special, yeah, he has to get. He has to get it all. Special <laughs> prescription. Just like, oh, I'll do this. All oh, covered in garlic and bathing in vinegar. All this crazy crap. Oh man, the uh, and one show that we ended up watching. I don't know if you remember, but it was when the Van Buren boys show up. The Van Buren boys are this gang that are like big fans of Martin Van Buren. And then Kramer tells the story of how he was making his own single slice of pizza. He was putting garlic on it and stuff like that. But then they were about to jump him. But then he, he puts his hands up like this, like in the form of an eight. Cause he was holding a, a garlic shaker in this hand. So he's like, no, don't. Cause he saw the shaker in his hand. Don't tell me it was and, one of their signs. Yeah. Man. And it was one of the secret signs of the group <laughs> the because Martin signs. Van Buren's the eighth president of the United States. He would throw that out. And he's like, no, don't wait. And he's and like, like, oh, you one of the old school guys. Yeah. 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 God, the, oh, and then, so. Of course it so, is. So Mr. Peterman, Mr. Peterman was so intrigued by Kramer's first story is that he bought all of Kramer's stories. Yeah. And alongside the the whole show is that Kramer had all these opportunities to be all cool and recite one. Oh, Kramer, tell that one story with this. And then Elaine told him he couldn't because he bought uh, Mr. Peterson bought the stories from Kramer, oh, yeah. so he can't. It's like a it's like a it's like right now, right? yeah, it's his now. And so now he can't tell stories. Now he's lame. Yeah, he, and, <laughs> and then he ended up Kramer buying. Kramer tells that one story, and he's like. Ah. Is yeah. to make it the lamest story he, ever. And then he ended up buying a bunch of stories from Newman. 
to call his own, but then he all all he talked was about was uh, bunions. So that didn't go in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That was brief, and that that was, that was brief. brief. It was a brief story about yeah. mine. St- like it was so ridiculous. And and so, so then so Mr. Stupid. Peterman uh, ended up uh, getting uh, Elaine to do the stories because he thought that just because he made up the same situation as Kramer did, that he was a genius now. Yes. And Elaine was going to do all the stories, and Elaine's stories really just sucked. It was like I loved, I loved it. That was one of it was the. Em- it's just embarrassing. It's one her. of the better episodes because it's just like the the time that C- Kramer gets his shine because that guy's just hilarious to me. The what I could tell you is that Seinfeld to me is uh, one of the. You know, there's a lot of shows that take their randomness, take their quirks, take their uh, the the dialogue, the dialogue deliveries from Seinfeld. You could see it, it near a blueprint. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll say that this show will be along the lines of I Love Lucy. Um, they say there's a statistic that goes around that somewhere around the world a show of, an episode of I Love Lucy is being played. <laughs> no matter what. No matter what. Mm-hmm. Same thing with Friends and I, and to my surprise, Baywatch. Baywatch wow. was actually one of the most popular shows debuted in over 100 plus countries. What the heck? Like in Switzerland? Or something? Well, yeah. I, man, some guys have to get the rocks off somehow. <laughs> but, no, it's going to be, uh, to my point, sorry for the tangent, but it's going to be one of those pivotal, long-lasting shows of our time. Without a doubt. Yeah. Without a doubt. Definitely. Um, tell you what, uh, well, let's just ex the commercial break, and let's just go straight for the, let's go straight for the gusto here. All right. Game um, swappers. Buy, sell, and trade. Game Swappers. Buy, sell, and trade your retro games and next-gen consoles. That's PS4 and Xbox One. You can come into contact with Game Swappers via Instagram at G-A-M-E-S-W-A-P-P-E-R-S. That's G-A-M-E-S-W-A-P-P-E-R-S. Game Swappers. Buy, sell, and trade. Keep in mind, guys, this Saturday at 7 o'clock, they're going to have the retro, uh, the bar arcade event at the Finish Line Sports Bar and Grill located at the Fairplex in Pomona. Um, off White Avenue. I don't know the exact address. Please contact Game Swappers for more info. Wow. They're going to have 20 plus competitive uh, competitive base games over about 20 plus screens. You'll have Super Nintendo, uh, PlayStation 3 games. You'll have Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, all the competitive uh, base games that you'll know and love. It's uh, ten dollars to get in for general mission. It's 18 and over, but there's going to be happy hour for the 21 and over crowd. Um, other than that, if you do share the more popular Mark and Andre show, Retro Collecting 101, or the Pay Per View Wrestling Podcast, you'll be able to get 10% off towards your retro game purchases at Game Swappers. Or if you're not in the interest of purchasing games at Game Swappers, you can also trade in retro games or current games as well. Simply share any which of the podcasts, mm-hmm. save the screenshot, show Game Swappers, you get an instant 10% off or 10% more towards your trade in. Beautiful. Anyway, guys, Freaking let's talk about this new yeah. thing. Oh, man, that was professional. You got it down, dude. dude. I always thought you read it. No but... script. No, I don't no, read off it. Off the top of the dome, freestyle. <laughs> like, what the heck? The, the next topic that we have on the docket here is, is this new is this new uh, app. came about a week, almost a week and a half ago. It's uh, several, several uh, servers crashed already. Well, the server to it actually crashed. And uh, this is taking the world by storm. It's uh, getting people outside. It's uh, you know getting people stabbed, and it's making people fall off cliffs. <laughs> this is something that's good for society because classic Darwinism shows you that the strong will survive, and the weak will and the weak will perish. Absolutely. Pokemon Go. Pokemon. I want to be oh, the very yeah. best. <laughs> and let's take it. The guy. The we all have different songs. <laughs> Can't stand <laughs> my real quail. Imagine the guy from Creed. The guy from Creed. Which song are we going with? Oh. I travel across the air, searching for a while. Creed. Imagine Creed doing the cover for Bo- <laughs> Pokemon. Get a kid's mouth. <laughs> it's you and me. <laughs> Oh no, it's my destiny oh, now. That's the dude from Pearl Jam. Now that I'm feeling like Pokemon Go. Oh, do 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 do. <laughs> the, that's how they, they, they restart their career that way. They just reboot from the Pokemon song. Pearl Jam, we want you to do the Pokemon. <laughs> I went hard on that Pokemon song. Poke Jam, just, you know, just start over, man. New, so, new band. So, <laughs> I, I see a bunch of kids outside now. 
Not even mm-hmm. kids. Everyone. I see. Yeah, I see fat people walking again. Yeah. People in wheelchairs walking again. Dude. Yes. Pokemon Go. <laughs> the crippled walking. Pokemon <laughs> Go. Walking. Imagine you can only. You, you're not walking. Stop. Get off your wheelchair and walk. <laughs> like, dang. Oh, we're gonna catch him. Like that much dedication. But no, one thing. Like, cause let's speak on the positives yeah. first. Yeah. Exactly. All right. I have never seen a mobile game sweep the world like this. It's crazy. Exactly. First of all, I thought Pokemon had lost its relevance with our age group, yeah. and and the millennials. I thought they were just kind of interested, or, or you know, uh, sorry, was it Generation Y that's under us? Yeah. yeah. I thought Generation Y was kind of over that. They weren't interested. No, everyone. I'm like forty year olds outside with their phones playing po- Pokemon Go with their kids. Families are coming together to Pokemon Go. I can't believe that. Yeah. It's kind of creepy though, because like sometimes people are really like I've never seen them in my neighborhood before. And they're just walking Who around. Who are you? I'm your neighbor. Oh. Whoa, whoa. Oh, nice oh, to meet you. My pleasure. But get out of my backyard. <laughs> Did you have an instance where someone actually went in your backyard? No, I was just joking. Oh, oh, oh man, dude. I, I got weird. I was just like, whoa, no, someone just actually kidding. went. I just, dude, I just wanted to write a Your joke. mom would be pissed <laughs> if so. <laughs> dude, just, like, lighten it up. Her backyard back is like a Zen garden. It is, seriously. Is it still like that? It's, dude, it's worse. It's what, worse as in better for her? There's two Zen dogs. All right. The monks back there, like, training. So. So there's monks back there training. Training. <laughs> the the all right. Now we briefly touched on the positives. I, Isaiah, we're really that bad. The, <laughs> no, no, no. With yours. No, just talking about in context with your positives. Oh, but I mean, yeah. what, what positive have you brought? Have you seen from uh, it? It kind of brings what you want. You know, it's like we're kind of the deep down in us. I think we kind of want Pokemon to really be in the real world. Absolutely. It's kind of close to that. Now you're kind of really in the real world, and yeah, you're finding kind Pokemon of, like it's, like, it's, it's kind of like there yeah. now. Like, it's like yeah, to bring what Isaiah. Uh, said it's like it is a form of virtual reality yes where you have to take the perspective of your camera to find like a beedrill yeah you know it's just this uh, I think it's very clever I just do not have time to get lost yeah. in that yeah because yeah. you know the, the same goes for anything I like if I play Starcraft or like any if I play Starcraft Roller Coaster Tycoon Bye life yeah exactly yeah. bye I'm, I'm making roller coasters all day like and, or, or I'm I'm fighting in role you know in click uh, based uh, gameplay and it's a choice I mean and yeah it, unfortunately people are already lost in yeah. this game so lost that they fall off cliffs <laughs> two kids fell off a cliff at the same time together it's sad but their cord, their courage will pull them through. You teach me, I'll teach you. Pokemon. The oh, that's, I, come I just, on, did they die? I don't know how you. Get, I don't know. I mean, they fell off a cliff. I mean, I mean, how caught up in the game were you? To hey, man, hold on. There's a, there's a Mewtwo over here. No, what oh. if what if Pokemon Go set people up like that, where there's a Mewtwo on a cl- like uh, after the cliff, and it's like ten feet too far. So I you gotta have to get kind of- it. <laughs> I mean, Pokemon! What, what Pokemon was out there like Hitmonchamp or like who was, who was out <laughs> there? Like, up, up there's a Mew? Here. I, I, just a, a Gasly? Gatorin or what? what a Gasly out there? Gasly. Like, <laughs> a ga- like a regular uh, Metapod? <laughs> Metapod. <laughs> Dude, I would, a ca- magic I would jump just... off a cliff to catch Metapod. <laughs> Dude, that defense is no joke, far. man. I would go that far. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I would do a it. A level 100 Metapod with defense. <laughs> Heck yeah, they'll stop any Charizard. Just... <laughs> <With defense>. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> It'll piss them off Dude. and you could easily catch it up through its frustration. Metapod's one of my favorite Pokemon, though. Metapod's? I'm just, the... I'm just Metapod. I'm saying. Metapod's? Metapod's, yeah. Metapod. <laughs> He's one of my favorite ones. Him and Mew. Why? <laughs> what kind of range that, is that? That is the best Mew contrast the I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> it's Metapod. And Mew. And Mew. It's, it's those two. <laughs> That's your whole squad. That's You're going to gym leaders with, with a Mew and Dude, a Metapod. I'll be happy. You know what card is getting popular now with the kids is that, that, r- that rare... And I use and I use the scare quotes, but the rare Mew that came around during the Pokemon first movie, mm-hmm. where we actually thought it was going to be Mew versus Mewtwo. Right, right. I remember that Monday, I was begging people to say who won. Right. Who won? Tell me. Neither of them did. And I was like, I didn't believe that. And I watched the movie, and I was like, wow, none of them. Nobody. No won. one won. Ash, it was like Ash was they, murdered. They Batman yeah. Superman my ass. They murdered Ash and brought him back to life with tears. I mean. Anyone, oh yeah! Anyone could have saw so that. So now this guy is like the they Lazarus him, yeah, <laughs> with the tears of uh, what with is the Pokemon emotion? Yeah, brought him back. the emotion of electrified him, right? Yeah, gave him the defibrillator. Yeah, 
<laughs> Pikachu! And, and then, you know, I'm surprised no scientists got involved with the, you know, Pokemon Tears theory, but yeah. in, in regards to Pokemon Go, yeah. you know, it's, I don't, I, I watched some gameplay, I don't get it. It's very basic. It's very basic. Oh, there's a Pokemon, let me throw a Pokeball at it. Yeah. Or, let me have a really half-ass battle. Their animations are just, like, yeah. little headbutts, and that's the whole fight. Yeah. There's no special flame attack, or it's just... Charizard use flame. Right. That should Headbutt. change. That should change after people get complacent. Oh, yeah, over but, time. But at, at, the fact of the matter is, I don't understand how it's that distracting to where you don't know you're about to walk it, off of a, a cliff. There was a kid that was stabbed in Anaheim. For, he got robbed for his phone, right? I, there, this won't be the first case, but this kid was stabbed in Anaheim while playing Pokemon Go. You have to realize is that, I don't care, you have to know your surroundings... You have to know that it's not safe to walk around San Bernardino at nine o'clock at night at a park to go catch a to go catch a Charizard with an iPhone six in hand. Yeah, like you have to understand that there is certain times to do things at certain places, mm -hmm. and to people that probably come from different towns, they probably won't know. But natives have to know. Like right. I know for I know for a fact if, if someone tells me, "Oh yeah, there's a party in San Bernardino." Uh first of all, I'm not going. No, no thank you. Yeah, no thank you. <laughs> and and then also, you will know when you're heading to San Bernardino. Yeah, like, and come on. And now. to the people listening uh different states and stuff, but you all know your CD neighborhood in every state. You know not to go to that CD neighborhood. Don't go. Don't go to the plight of the city. You're going to set yourself up to get mugged Expe uh, and, and with your phone hanging out. You have to have your phone out. Right, and I, I don't know how the, the tracking system works because, you know, you can find other Pokemon users. I yeah. guess there are meetup points that some, you know, Pokemon Go players will go to. There are gyms and other locations. Well, what other thieves would do, I mean, they just get the game. Yeah. Get the game, wait for a bunch of people to go to a meetup spot and just rob them. Yeah. That, just that's... go to where everybody's hanging out and rob them. Yeah. That's crazy. And then they leave. Mm -hmm. But there are also weirder things happening. Like, okay, uh, there's two instances. One is a, a young lady ends up finding a dead body while playing Pokemon Go. She's That's like, deep. she caught it. And she ended <laughs> what the heck? I can't catch it. <laughs> the Pikachu is on top of the body. Wow, like you're trying to point like <laughs> at you're it. You're trying to try to warn her. Yeah, <laughs> he's around. Like, the, 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 <laughs> but anyway, so <laughs> she's playing he's Pokemon around. Go and she finds the body. Which is, you know, terrifying, right? That's horrifying. But right. now this body is found, and their, you know, justice will be served eventually. Yeah. Um, there were two military, ex-military officials, uh, looking for a killer on the loose. And what do you know? The guy's playing Pokemon Go, so they use Pokemon Go to track him <laughs> down. Know? And yeah. they get him. <laughs> and oh, there was this, all, there was this uh, one as well that, so uh, a couple actually had, both had the Pokemon Go app. The one, the girlfriend was able to track the boyfriend at his ex girlfriend's oh, house. Oh, watch out! Catching Pokemon. Caught or, up. Yeah. Caught up. He was he was using his bee drill. Dude, bust the Doug. No, it just rolls right into Doug. Like, I can imagine like a Doug of shows, like a Doug Pokemon hybrid. Hey man, you're Ash. No, that, no, no, you can't. No, no. I would, have, I would have to at that point. No, yeah. I can't. I can't have that. I, that's too much mesh. Duh. No, then too, many, per, like, too many ideas. First of all, that's the most one of the most Dear dynamic. General, I just caught a Pikachu. Like <laughs> that is the most dynamic character in Ash Ketchum, meeting the most bland of characters. And yeah. the adventure would be lifeless. Yes, Ash is all like, "Let's jump over this pit," and Doug's like, "I don't know how I feel oh, about it. Let me write this down." Poor child. <laughs> the most vanilla meets like Rocky Road ice cream. Right. You know? <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that mix, man. D boring, lifeless Doug meeting Ash Ketchum. <laughs> never. That never happened. Put on this hat. I don't know. My hair is chafy. Oh, yeah. I remember that one episode where Doug wanted to get, like, was scared to get a haircut or, like, didn't want to get a haircut. And then he ended up getting a haircut from one of his, his child barber. <laughs> I know it's just I like show how it just goes yeah. to like they wasted an episode on that. And, and someone anyway. watched it. But it the, well, anyway, so, <laughs> so Pokemon Go, uh, there's a lot to be fixed because now I, I have to say that the the people that make this game need to know that there's places people cannot go. Do not plant Pokemon here. And and you know these Pokemon are actually location based. 
So, you know, a grass-type Pokemon will be in a grassier area, water-type, towards a lake or something like that, that nature. So you have to go to, like, Antarctica to get... Exactly. Like, uh, ice-based Pokemon? Exactly. I don't Dragonair. know if they have... Well, I don't Dragonair. know if... Uh, there's no ice, really, but... Oh, yeah, there isn't. There isn't right. any ice-based Pokemon. So where do you go for, like, a Mewtwo? Well, you go to like Area 51? <laughs> Area 51. Go to Area 51. Roswell? Go to, some... go to White House. They want to know where the Pokemon is. White House? Here. Right in the center the of the house. door. People <laughs> break into the White right House. There, just, like... <laughs> just right in the president's <laughs> seat. Just, uh... <laughs> in front of Obama's face is Mewtwo. It's, it's just a bunch of operatives. In like press, just press try us. Press <laughs> <laughs> in the middle of the desk. Yeah, excuse me. Excuse Mew, me. Mewtwo oh, I waiting. see he's uh, playing uh, Pokemon Go. <laughs> Impressive. It's impressive. How many Pokemon you have? That's great. Splendid. <laughs> How you doing? Yeah, but I, I don't know, man. I, I see a lot of good in this. Yeah. And I also see that, uh, and, you know, of, of course there's a lot of bad, but I also see that this might be this might be a big change for gaming. We're going to see a lot more. Because the yeah. success of Pokemon Go is obviously going to expire some other type of game. War, I yeah. think Warcraft might go mobile. Warcraft Don't might quote go mobile. me, but... Uh, but uh, popular franchises are going to have to look at this. And, and like every company does, they look at it, they see the success, and they see where it's failing. And then they take that failure and make it yeah. better. Yeah, you're kind of getting a sneak peek right now of right. what people are already... Because they were working on this app, I'm sure, probably years before. It right. Yeah, right. right now. So you're seeing what people are already starting to do already. Right, and you're going to... I, I assure you, there's going to be some type of... Because uh, it's AR, right? So yeah. we're going to get those, you know, like possibly Google Glass to yeah. work with it, be compatible with it, or some type of glasses, peripheral, that'll right. work with it. And then you're going to have a bunch of kids with these, you know, glasses right. on, walking around, not yeah. looking down at their phone, but, you know, being... You being know, aware of their surroundings, right. finally. Because that's is, people uh, are... Like, when I'm driving around, people are... I can tell they're playing Pokemon Go because they're staring down while they walk. Yeah. So, uh, you know, someone caused this huge car crash because he saw a Pokemon on the freeway. Right. And he tried to catch it while standing in the middle of the freeway. Didn't know he was on the freeway. I don't know how you don't know you're on the freeway. He, he didn't get hit, though. What the hell are these cars doing here? <laughs> and, and no one died or anything, but it was a massive car wreck. Like, you know, piled up. No one died, nothing horrible, but look at all these cars that got damaged because some idiot wanted to catch... You know, Weevil or whatever. They have to... Is that even a Pokemon? <laughs> yeah, Weevil. Weevil. Uh, Weevil, there we go. They have to... Uh, oh. They have to make sure that these Pokemon are located nowhere near freeways. freeways. Like, if, if you if you go near the enter of a freeway, like, near... Or anywhere near a freeway, you, they'll, they should give you a warning. Right. Saying, there's no Pokemon here, you're for sure never going to find any here. Dang, Please leave. Man, get out of here. Yeah. Or else. Or are you? And then they'll tease you to yeah, go. Or kind of are you? I want to look more now. Yeah. Like, oh, there's no Pokemon here. Let me see. Or is there? There may <laughs> or may not be Pokemon on this freeway. There's no Pokemon here. Or are they? And then there's like a, a silhouette of Mewtwo. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? Oh, Who's that over there? Come closer. And you were oh my gosh! And then, off and, the then, and then classic Darwinism would come into play where the strong will survive, <laughs> and there's only going to be like the most elite of Pokemon trainers. The what weak if, shall perish. What is this? You know, what if this is some kind of weird conspiracy? elimination to like, like depopulate, <laughs> depopulate kids because they're stupid, placing things that shouldn't be like you said right off the edge of a cliff, just right there. At the, you want to end of the Grand like, Canyon? You want to catch me, don't you? And then YouTube keeps going back, and then you go off the cliff, ah! and you're just like, or some onyx or some catch them all. That's stupid. Why let the screen that as they die? <laughs> uh, like a Charmander and Kaiser Steel or something like yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> the it's like in the the most dangerous place you could be in. The the, the, the last the, the last topic we're going to talk about today is the the recent uh, the recent um recent, uh, debut. Uh, teaser, if you will. Nintendo is actually going to come out with the NES, the Nintendo Entertainment System Retro Console. It's going to come, It's going to be for $60. It's going to be selling for $60. And it's going to have 30 games. 30 games, 60 bucks. There's one controller, but there's two available spots. And it's going to have HDMI output. The thing about this, it, it, Andre, if you want to pull up that list for me, oh, yeah, no um, that way I could read it out, but now I could see that Nintendo's actually getting into the retro uh, retro gaming scene now. I'm scared now by reselling the same games. I'm not. I'm, I'm not comfortable the, with this. These games that you're going to list off right now easily retail, and I think about uh, so about one hundred and eighty dollars in each one of those games. Not each one, but I'm saying like in total. Wouldn't it reduce? Wouldn't it reduce the value of the game? You said one hundred eighty. 
Well, I, I, from reading the thirty games that they had, yeah, I, th- there's not, uh, there's not a lot of them that are rare. Okay. The most rare one I found was probably Ninja Gaiden Two. That's probably in there. All those other games are kind of like about fifteen to twenty dollars. Right, so I got the list. Oh, uh, let me. You uh, want to read it off? Uh, uh, yes. Yeah, so okay. Uh, Mario One. Uh huh. Mario Two. Mario Three. Mario Four. Mario Five. You're stupid. Mar- You're Mario Six. I was really Mario Nine. Nah. Mar- oh, but not Mario Seven. <laughs> well, eight. No, because uh, the licensing in Japan wouldn't allow it to. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the all right now I'll be able to see and assess all the the but you're, basic you're the scrolling price. through the list. Okay, so the complete list of games includes Balloon Fight, Bubble waste, Bobble, Waste, Castlevania, Castlevania mm-hmm. Two, Simon's Quest, mm-hmm. Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong Junior, Double Dragon Two, The Revenge, mm-hmm. Doctor Mario, Excite Bike, Final Fantasy, Galaga. Ghost and Goblins, Gradius, Ice Climber, Kid Ice Icarus, Cube. Ice Cube, Ice Cream, Kirby's Adventure, <laughs> Mario Brothers, Mega Man 2, Metroid, Ninja Gaiden, Pac Man, Punch Out featuring Mr. Dream. Keep in mind, guys, that this isn't Mike Tyson's Punch Out. Right. Tyson, my, uh, Super Punch Out featuring Mr. Dream, which is which basically is the recording light artist skin. That wrote Umbrella for the, uh, Rihanna. <laughs> <laughs> the light skin Mike Tyson. Uh, Star Tropics okay. That's not a game Light Skin Mike Tyson Is not a game okay. yeah. uh, Star Tropics Super C Which is the second Iteration of Contra Super Mario Brothers okay. Super Mario Brothers 2 Super okay. Mario Brothers 3 okay. Tech Mobile The Legend of Zelda Zelda 2 The Venture Link After looking at All these games These 30 games And assessing a price They range from You're looking at About 150 to 180 dollars In games So it is It is almost double Almost triple What's the value of the games But But it'll it'll affect The value of the games That are actually out Not necessarily Because emulators Have been out For a longer time Than this And that still Has an effect of the price I can download An emulator Of Chrono Trigger Mm -hmm. But Chrono I don't have Chrono Trigger here But uh, the, The game itself Is still 90 dollars Earthbound Earthbound was $100 A year and a half ago oh $200 God. And it's still available On the Wii U uh, marketplace Is it still that Is it, is it that rare? Like No it's It was one of the best It's like a best selling game mm. But They Everyone hoarded the game That way they raised the price Like if I start If I start Hoarding I don't know If, if I, I start hoarding X-Men Mutant Apocalypse For mm. the Super Nintendo mm. If I grab 80 copies of these Wait f- Wait 4 months And I'll see the price Increase dramatically because there's not there's 80 games out there that should be somewhere but they're okay. not okay. simple. But in the context of of what we have here with 60 games of emulation, you have emulation with 1080 uh, output. But the, you're the retronomic ah, retronomic the retro <laughs> the retro uh, ret, what is it retron five wait the retron five <laughs> retron five I was gonna say I retron five thousand like Metal Gear yeah. So like, I know yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah he, he knows about Metal Gear <laughs> yeah the retron so what you saying yeah I, I I thought that that had HDMI support HD game support yeah, it but, had uh, like graphics rendering exactly with the consoles that you put in it you Sorry, have the uh, the games that you put in the console yeah the only downside is you have to have those games this this buying this. You automatically set yourself up for the, most of the best games for the Super Nintendo uh, for the regular Nintendo. Eh. Meh. Yeah, I know, and, and I say meh myself because I have almost all those games, and I only play Castlevania, Super C, Super uh, Contra. I only play a you mean you only play a few games on the NES. If you would have mentioned Mario Kart. Maybe I would on, on the NES? On the NES, yeah. <laughs> Makes mean, perfect sense. I really... No, but no, that's a good point that you bring up, Isaiah. Is that they, this is going to follow suit to other games. You're right. going to see a Super Nintendo release. You're going to see maybe even a GameCube because you're going to see a GameCube release. Mm-hmm. And then, they're rebooting consoles now. Are you serious? Yeah, you know, we're, 1080, can't, we can't keep well, like we're not going to innovate. This is Nintendo saying, "Well, the retro game market is getting so flooded. You know what? Let's get in on it again. Let's no. go back. Go away. They're going to take it back to the past." We're gonna take it back to the past. Yeah, but I mean, th- so this is, Nintendo's smart in my in my opinion okay. th- because they're they're looking at this and saying, you know what, we have thirty games that we still have licensing to, mm-hmm. let's re-release them. Let's put you know, let's slap a little cute little make it look like a Nintendo again, right? And, and I, put I emulation on it, which which is no cost to yes, us at all. I promise you that this game, now well this system itself. Will be hoarded by game by actual game stores because they're going to buy them to the point where Nintendo won't even dish them out anymore. Mm-hmm. 
and they're gonna hike the price up. Oh, so it's gonna be a sixty dollars isn't gonna be the price you pay in two years. I promise you that. Predictor here, yeah. you know, Nostradamus. I promise you that. <laughs> any any Estradamus here? Any okay. Estradamus. So you're gonna get somebody who's gonna like want it. Like it comes around. Exactly. You're gonna start to be like, oh dang, I want to play that now. Yeah. Now it's gone. Yeah, it's, all, <laughs> it's gonna be like uh, it's gonna be like anything else, like a book that's not in publishing anymore. Right, right. It's gonna be the same, like a CD that mm-hmm. was in rare press. Mm-hmm. This thing won't be around for a long time, like you, th- unless Nintendo decides to actually make a lot of them. But I don't, I just don't really think that they're gonna do that. I think they're playing around with the idea. I, yeah, that's why testing yeah. the waters. Yeah, exactly. testing the waters, starting with the NES, and then like I, I do believe they're gonna try to slip in NES, have a little miniature NES. Or Super NES, sorry. Yeah. And then, uh, of course, maybe even slide into, you know, Nintendo 64, because that's still... Oh, wanted. yeah, that's the one I was missing. I went yeah. from the SNES to the GameCube. Yeah, so... Uh, I completely missed... I think the... they're, they're going to just keep, you know, racking up, and then they're going to end with some kind of Super Dome-like <laughs> super dimensional dome. object you plug into and play any game you want from Nintendo. The <laughs> NES Erect. <laughs> Inversion of the Tesseract. It's just an... Uh, wow. You yeah. just think of the game you want to play and they'll play it. The it, infinite The game that you were subconsciously thinking about playing, it's gonna play it. it. It's already playing it by the time you Based wake up, on what you've already typed like a couple days ago or <laughs> man, something I wish. you Googled a while back, yeah. like once you think about it, it starts playing it for you in your dreams. Similar <laughs> interests. <laughs> I, I I personally won't buy it because I have most of the games on there and I barely fair. out of that thirty games I only play Castlevania, Double Dragon and Super C. Mm. Like, all those other games are cool, but I don't have that much time to invest is it, into it. Is it into hard a platformer. enough to find the consoles, like, you know, like the NES consoles? Yes, very it is. Um, uh, the days that I don't work at my regular job, I work at, uh, uh, I volunteer at Game Swappers. And, uh, th- dude, we barely get NESs that come in. We, I say, we barely get, and we, plus, you find one, but does it work? That's the next question. Yeah, like, there's there's tons of, it all snowballs into a big, big questions after other, after another but we but but to stop you there is that we barely get the consoles in the first place now. We right. get a bunch of the games, but when we have the consoles, they go quick. Yeah. So now the price for a the price for a regular SNES is $70, but if you have a one chip, which basically a one chip SNES is like one that can actually play in RGB, which is the better which is a better output. Right. Um the NES, we have it for the they have it for like $60, 60 70 bucks. But the pins are cleaned. There's a new pin. Uh, there's a new 72 pin connector. Mm-hmm. Reads the games without without blowing on them. Right, right. It's just there's a lot of there's a lot of work, <laughs> right. a lot of labor, and I, it, they, they just fly off the shelves. You know? I, it, it saves you the hassle because I mean you know you're gonna have that fill in. I think yeah, you, I like Nintendo. Right? You're already seventy dollars in right. the hole. Now you have to get the games. When you already have this, and you have to find them, HDMI, and get a working console. Yeah, uh, you don't have to blow on anything. Right. I kind of like that part though of like you know trying to get it to work. The, like the, the struggle, the struggle, struggle. Like you're a technician or something. Oh, yeah. damn it, it didn't work seven you, times. You notice I don't even have. I I always tell people like top loader. Do not worry. Like I told them, don't waste your time on the first NES. Buy third party, which is the newest thing out there. Like just buy any third party NES console, and then. And then, or a top loader. So what's to stop people from just doing that then? Then to getting this one that has a sixty, people well, want the thirty games. People want well, because they want authenticity you, or something, well, right? It, it's it, the the retro market. These guys are always like, well, I just want the actual game. <laughs> I, I cannot like I I love the retro community, but there's some guys, there's some sticklers and mm-hmm. some girls that are sticklers, mm-hmm. and you have to you know you have to roll with your punches. But they get there sometimes. There's people that. Try to like, oh, you don't think you could do both of these? If I buy this game, you don't think I could do it for a hundred? Haggling when oh. we have when our store has like the lowest prices, dude. We sell Legend of Zelda for like twenty five bucks. Mm-hmm. No one else is gonna sell that for twenty five dollars. No. Like people try to like, just trust me. The balls are low, right? Low balling. Anywhere else, this market 50, fifty rupees at least. Ooh, go to M M&M and M Games. I don't, don't even know. Don't bash them. Exact, well. They, dude, <laughs> well, well. You, you know, hey, that's the price. What are they gonna do? You have been there? Yeah, I have. It's, you, it's I really mean, unfortunate. The only it time we actually like capitalized at at, uh, at Eminem Games was actually get a loose disc, dry uh, stuntman, for like four bucks. I mean, that was the only time we ever came up. Mm-hmm. I barely, I only catch caught them slipping like twice. Mm-hmm. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. But the, 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 aggressive, the, like I'm scared. This this whole thing about <laughs> um, 
Like with with retro gaming, I see a lot of benefits for newcomers. I don't see benefits for people like me that have a bunch of games already. Mm -hmm. You know, there's there's no benefit to me because I it's just I'm I'm in too deep now. Right. You, yeah, you have an and, entire arcade. Um, here. Uh, I I just wish the best for Nintendo in this con on this the context. Best for Nintendo, like Be this emotional. I hope the best for them. I hope it works yeah, out. Yeah, I mean, it's just. I mean, I feel that connection. I, I hope they do. They do good in the future too. I mean. I, I, I see a lot of people buying this console. I, I loved Super Nintendo. When Super Nintendo go, that's when it got me. Super okay. Nintendo. When that came out, I was like, yes. And they were putting out games after games. Yeah. And they were just, they seemed like ahead of the game. And I was like, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then once, you know, PlayStation came out, I was like, oh. Oh, well. You know, 64 came back. I was like, oh, okay, this is kind of cool. Yeah. Three handles. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> four, four plugins. I'm like, give me more. Like, yeah. oh, the Z button behind yeah. the thing, like a special trigger, like a secret button. But, yeah. You know, and, I, and they're just pushing it forward. <laughs> They're innovating, so you, right? You know, they're innovating. So this is what, you know, that's what they're going to tap into next is that we just can't focus on one console anymore. Let's no. up the price thrice times and let's get you a, an NES from Nintendo, an official, because they're going to come out with the official controllers. The, the console looks semi-official. Mm -hmm. looks It's just like a modern day version of it. But you're going to have an SNES, an NES, and a 64. That's going to mm -hmm. tap... To the eighties babies, mm -hmm. to the to the Pepsi the Pepsi kids, mm -hmm. and then Generation Y the millennials. And I was gonna say, I guess that I guess Nintendo can do that, right? Because yeah. they came out at that time, whereas PlayStation they came out later in the game, and they can't really do that. Okay. They can't. And Sony Sony honestly isn't a game company to me. Yeah, Sony yeah. is not a gaming company. They're, Nintendo is only a gaming company. Right. Yeah. The so thing. they know how to entertain. They know how to innovate. I've never seen Nintendo take a risk that sucked you know like the wii u might have been a slight mistake just based on marketing yeah but yeah it's a control come on but they did they the made wii. a tablet controller they, you know they every did, time they made a new yeah. version of their game they did something weird and it worked out and it changed all of mm. gaming yeah. we, we can say anything bad about the wii u but the wii took everything by storm that's why the playstation had to make the that their own toy version of what was it oh yeah, the, yeah like yeah. the playstation move yeah, yeah they had to they had no yeah. choice they had to follow after nintendo's footsteps so what I can tell you is that this is going to be a high-selling item. Um, you expect a lot of uh, resellers to scalp this. Right. Um, but for the price tag, $30, 60 games, you're paying about, what, 2 bucks a game plus Flip a control? It. What? $60, 30 games. Oh, yeah, $60 for 30 games. You're, you know, it's $2 a game, basically, mm -hmm. plus the console, HDMI output. It's great value. It's not a great value in the terms of me, who already have the games and can do it already. So... Um, to the newbies, they'll have a great. They'll be a. They'll be a little step ahead. But then to play the games that they don't have, they're gonna have to buy the console. They're gonna have to buy the games. That, but maybe that'll spark the retro co exactly. uh, collecting community. So exactly. And then you're gonna see a lot of money get flipped back to game swappers. So who knows, man? Like perfect. Uh, <laughs> there can definitely be a positive shift for retro collecting. Exactly. And you know what? I want to uh, close off this uh, episode of the Mark and Andre uh, podcast. I want to thank my. My uh, surprise guest, Isaiah Martinez. Yeah, man. Feels good. For good, coming good. through. I appreciate your nervous, input. Dude, I'm no, it's, it's fine, man. Like, <laughs> now you're nervous. It's all over. I'm I'm nervous, every, every so, off, I, every so often we'll have you on. so hard. And um, <laughs> the, uh, I want to leave the floor to Andre uh, for his uh, shameless promotion to close out with Lyricology 101. If you guys haven't watched his videos already, please do. You, He's you already are definitely promoting. missing out. It's already done. Um, <laughs> Other than that, I'll leave it to Andre to close the show out tonight. Thank you guys for tuning in. He, he did it. Uh, we're done. No, just playing. <laughs> um, yeah, if you guys are interested, uh, I have a series on YouTube uh, called Lyricology 101. I essentially break down very specific songs and all of the aspects of their lyrics. I show you their rhyme schemes, how everything was compiled and put together. Um, and I also do rap tips, just showing people how to rap and giving you the intricacies of hip-hop songwriting. Um, if you're interested, you can check me out at youtube.com slash Andre Gaynor, A-N-D-R-E-G-A-I-N-E-R. And pretty much everything, uh, as far as my social media and everything, will be rooted through there. So just check me out, youtube.com slash Andre Gaynor. And that's it, guys. I mean, thank you for listening. Thank you, Isaiah, for coming down. It was fun. What a beautiful day. Um, so I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you for listening. We love you and respect you. And we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Have a good night, guys. Thank you.